you know, when I was in high school, I was lifting weights and I wanted to bulk up. So I went to the health food store and I bought these muscle gainer protein powders, right? And I started consuming them and man, did I feel like crap. And now I know why, because there's one ingredient that is pretty dangerous. And they put this certain ingredient into these products to enhance muscle growth, but you're going to find out it's not going to do that. Personally, I think it's a very dangerous ingredient. It can increase acne, bloating, inflammation in the gut, mental irritability and anxiety, insomnia. It's highly addictive because it increases dopamine, which is like the reward uh, neurotransmitter. And it'll actually produce more acid in your mouth to promote cavities. But the worst thing it'll do, it'll spike your blood sugar so high, way more than sugar, and then create a crash right after. Now, if you do this repetitively, you're going to develop belly fat, high cholesterol, and, you know, a fatty liver. Other than that, I'm sure it's going to be fine. And this ingredient is usually the first ingredient in the list on the label, which means it represents most of the product. And this ingredient is called maltodextrin. This is one of the worst ingredients in most ultra-processed food products, aka junk food where they start out with dent corn. What's dent corn? Dent corn is uh, inedible. You can't eat it, okay? It's, it's for feed and things like that. They grind it up into powder, and then they add acids and alkaline chemicals to it, and then they'll heat it up, they'll put pressure into it, and they have to take the color out, take the odor out, and then you end up with this powder. And what's wild about maltodextrin is that it's a filler. It's just some cheap material to add bulk to a product so they can make more money. I mean, there's absolutely no benefit to taking this for your body. It's classified as a carbohydrate, but it acts like a sugar. So when you're reading the label, you're looking, oh yeah, it's low in sugar. Take a look on the glycemic index, which is the index that shows you how much an ingredient spikes your blood sugar. Table sugar is about 65. Glucose is 100. Maltodextrin is between 105 and 185 on that scale. So it creates way more of a spike than even glucose. And check this out, in one serving, they're gonna put 253 grams. Now, in your mind, you're going, well, okay, it's 253 grams of carbs. No, it's not. It's 253 grams of sugar, which is equivalent to 60 teaspoons of sugar. This is just in one serving, 1,012 calories of sugar. Actually, it's something that's even worse than sugar. You're going to put in your body to supposedly bulk up your muscles. I mean, per serving, they're only going to give you 50 grams of protein as whey protein and 253 grams of carbohydrate or sugar, right? It's not a good ratio. I mean, you don't want to combine protein with that much starch or, or sugar because it creates all sorts of issues in your body. So when you dump that much carbohydrate into the energy factory called the mitochondria, your demand for certain vitamins are going to go super, super high. Like for B1, for example, you're going to need a lot of B1 to allow your body to metabolize that much pure sugar. Of course, they add some vitamins in there, but they only add like 0.4 milligrams of B1. That's not going to even come in the ballpark of how much you need. So what happens is you end up depleting your nutrients when you take this much refined carbohydrate. I mean, just think about what this starch really is. It's ultra processed, which means they're extracting enzymes, vitamins, trace minerals. When you consume that, it takes a lot of uh, nutrient reserves that you have in your body to be able to even metabolize that. So you end up depleting things down the road when you can keep consuming it. And in the process, you're creating a lot of what's called oxidation, which is kind of like you're rusting your body out from the inside out, and that's going to lead to inflammation. And you not knowing that, not even realizing you're getting that much sugar, you might think, oh yeah, it's a, it's a great product It's because everyone else is doing it. It's become normalized. It doesn't even fit the definition of the word food, so it can't even be called ultra-processed food because it, it can't sustain life. You can't live on it. So you can imagine what's happening to the pancreas too, because every time you consume that, it's like a massive spike of blood sugars and that cell that makes this, this pumping out of this insulin, it's just gonna be like whiplashed every time you take it. And you're gonna find that after you take it, you're gonna feel kind of groggy, 
blood sugars kind of feel funky. Next morning, hard to get out of bed. And you wake up with low blood sugar because you ate sugar the day before, which will cause you to want more of that to fulfill this emptiness. But then you keep doing this over weeks and months. And now what happens is the body's going to start developing something called insulin resistance. And now it's going to be harder and harder to get energy into the cells. And it's going to be harder to grow your muscles. To grow muscles, you need exercise, you need protein. Nowhere have I ever observed that you need high doses of refined sugar to grow muscle. Yes, it increases insulin. And insulin is an anabolic hormone. But the problem is, when you start to stimulate insulin over a period of time, you develop what's called insulin resistance. And that's what really creates a deficiency of insulin because you develop this resistance. It's just part of the body trying to protect itself from getting that much sugar. It'll start blocking it because sugar is toxic. So if you haven't seen my full video on how to grow muscle the healthy way, I'm going to put this video up right here. Check it out. If you had to pick the worst ingredient on the planet, what would you pick? And I'm talking about an ingredient that's in a lot of foods, not some banned dangerous chemical, but some ingredient that is very pervasive in our foods. What would you pick? Go ahead and type it down in the comment section. The ingredient that I'm going to talk about is much, much higher on the glycemic index than glucose. Now, what is the glycemic index? It, it is a scale that measures how fast a carbohydrate is absorbed and spikes your blood sugar. So at 100, you have glucose, okay? So that's pretty high, right? Now, glucose is a monosaccharide, okay? It's just one sugar. When you combine two different sugars, like glucose and fructose, you get sucrose, that's table sugar, okay? And because fructose is lower on the glycemic index, it's gonna pull the glycemic index down a bit to roughly about 72. That's a disaccharide. Now, saccharide means sugar, and di means two. And then glucose is a monosaccharide, it's just one sugar. So the reason why I'm talking about the disaccharide or the monosaccharide is because this ingredient is a polysaccharide, which means many different sugars that are combined. However, this polysaccharide is a lot worse than glucose, even though it's a polysaccharide. So it is the ingredient that is the highest on the glycemic index. I don't know of any other ingredient that's higher than this thing I'm gonna tell you. And that ingredient is maltodextrin, okay? Now, maltodextrin doesn't sound that bad, like malto. Well, that sounds pretty natural. And dextrin, it doesn't end with ose, like all the sugars end with, like glucose, fructose. So dextrin, it doesn't sound like a sugar, but maltodextrin behaves like a sugar, but it's not classified as a sugar. So here's the problem. When you read the label, okay, if something has maltodextrin in it, it does not have to be classified as a sugar, okay? It's classified under the total carbohydrates. So this can be very misleading because you don't know how much sugar that's in that product. So somehow manufacturing companies came up with this loophole because they know a lot of people are against this added sugar. And so even on their website, certain chemical companies that make maltodextrin actually use it as a marketing thing. This is what it said on one of their uh, websites. Many soft drinks and other flavored beverages contain maltodextrin in their formulas so they can have a lowered amount of sugar on the nutritional facts label. Wow, that is a great marketing strategy. So the problem with maltodextrin is that it behaves like sugar, yet it's not listed as sugar. So it's in a lot of different foods and you're not being notified, you're not being aware of how much sugar you're actually consuming. Now, the reason why maltodextrin is higher on the glycemic index than glucose is because it has a much faster absorption rate in your stomach. Apparently, the enzymes act on this man-made synthetic sugar-like carbohydrate much faster than actual glucose. And so, yes, it is a man-made synthetic sugar. It's made with high heats, it's made with chemicals, it's made with acids. So it's a highly processed carbohydrate that is extremely inexpensive. You could get at a wholesale cost, like 
30 grams of maltodextrin for less than a penny. Now you're probably thinking, well, uh, I don't consume maltodextrin. It's in, not in any of my foods. Well, I'm just going to list some of the foods that it's in. Um, it's in supplements, okay, big time. It's in even the natural flavorings. I had to really work hard to find a company that flavored our some of our nutritional products that did not contain maltodextrin. And unfortunately, those flavorings were a lot more expensive than the ones that had the maltodextrin. When you buy herbal formulas that are extracts, like they'll say, I don't know, ginkgo biloba or turmeric, and it says like 10 to one or five to one extract, usually they're using maltodextrin as a drying agent to turn it into a powder. Even stevia, when they turn into a powder, many times is made with maltodextrin. So here you are trying to do low carb when you're getting a lot of carbohydrate. But of course, it's only listed and the total carbohydrates, not the added sugars. Even powders that are made from oil, like MCT oil, and even like certain fish oil powders, okay? Now I have a cod liver oil powder that does not use maltodextrin. It's the only one out there that doesn't use it. And it took me a long time to find the company that didn't use the maltodextrin. Performance gels. So let's say you're gonna do a long distance marathon, okay? And you need that little gel pack to give you that carbohydrate energy to keep going. Well, the first ingredient, maltodextrin. So as an athlete, I don't think you wanna take something super high on the glycemic index to start spiking your insulin. Then you have the energy drinks, okay? The protein powders, the electrolyte powders. Many of them have this added maltodextrin. Even in the vitamin forms, as it forms like citrates, like potassium citrate, or magnesium citrate. The infant formulas, the infant foods, unfortunately, have maltodextrin. The weight gain formulas, a lot of times the first ingredient is maltodextrin. But if you look at the label, it's low in sugars. It's very high in carbohydrate because they don't have to list it as sugars. Beer has maltodextrin, thus the beer belly. Animal feeds have maltodextrin. Many keto products have this uh, hidden maltodextrin which by the way, I'm going to be putting a list on my website very, very soon. And I'm working very quickly on this. So you can have a list of what foods have maltodextrin and what foods do not, because sometimes they sneak it in there. A great majority of the diet products out there, the diet powders, the diet protein bars are loaded with maltodextrin. Many of the soups that you consume, desserts have maltodextrin, ice creams, cereals, snack products, and even intravenous nutrition. The IVs that they'll give people to rehydrate them have maltodextrin. Sauces, medications. So maltodextrin is very pervasive in our food supply. Unfortunately, it's used to give the, it's called the, the mouthfeel. It gives a very smooth texture, so it makes it feel good in your mouth. It's also used as a volume enhancer as a filler, just to increase the volume. Like I said before, they use it as a spray to dry certain things, both oils and proteins and, and even nutrition, unfortunately. It's been used as a fat replacer for certain diet foods because they want it low fat, right? And so they can put this in there because it actually gives you the texture of fat when it's really a carbohydrate. But now they're using maltodextrin in a different form. Okay, it's called resistant maltodextrin. It's like a resistant starch. They change the chemistry from this starch to a fiber. However, a lot of the research that has been done on this has been done from industry, and I just don't trust the results right now. It's kind of an experiment. Uh, there's a big difference between consuming synthetic man-made fiber and fiber from vegetables like celery or salad. So now you're gonna see a lot of information on these functional food fibers that are now considered health food. And they're in a lot of keto foods as corn fiber, tapioca fiber, and they're called resistant maltodextrin. So who knows if they're GMO or not, or if they have traces of chemicals. And there's not a lot of information on the manufacturing process. Personally, I'm gonna get my fiber from actual vegetables.
And as I was studying about this topic, I found maltodextrin is also classified as an insecticide, go figure. And the other big problem with maltodextrin is it depletes nutrition. You see, anytime you have a carbohydrate or a sugar and you consume it without nutrients, in order to metabolize that carbohydrate, it takes nutrients, B vitamins, calcium, potassium, things like that. And so when you're consuming a lot of refined carbohydrate, it's gonna deplete your reserve of nutrients. So you end up with less nutrition if you're consuming these carbohydrates. And all this boils down to a much greater spike in insulin, which is behind so many health problems. So personally, I'm gonna stay away from maltodextrin. It's, they're really doing an experiment on people. The jury is still out on the resistant starch. Uh, time will tell, but it's very difficult, if not impossible, to find an independent study to truly evaluate the so-called health benefits of maltodextrin. Now, if you have not seen my video on the glycemic index and something called the glycemic load, I put that video up right here. Check it out.